I'm sorry if we're doing this because I miss Yu-Gi-Oh. So do I. Do you know Yu-Gi-Oh never went away? Really? Yeah, no. It just got crazier and crazier. Anyway, let's talk about Kaiba. <laughs> Seto Kaiba is a fictional dickhead from the Yu-Gi-Oh series known for his arrogant demeanour, his like Colgate white pimp coat, and for being a smug bellend. Did you also know that he was inspired by a real guy who was also a smug bellend? For anyone who uh, doesn't know what Yu-Gi-Oh is, how would you describe it? Uh, well, it was based on a manga that was about child gambling. That is now inexplicably a multi-billion dollar uh, media empire. <laughs> Did you know that? The original manga is about gambling. No. Yeah. Also, in the original manga, like, the card game wasn't like a big deal until they realised it was popular. Oh, Jesus. So I think Yugi is supposed to be like king of games, so that's why he's good at everything. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. it's just like he beats someone at a card game, but he's also good at everything else. One of like, he's, yeah. That's, that's like blowing my mind a little bit. Yeah, that's why they have that bit um, after like, is it the island arc? I think where so, they play yeah. like dungeon dice monsters. Yeah. Because they were trying to introduce like, oh, here's a new game we can push and then no one liked dungeon dice monsters. They so bring back, bring it back to the cards. <laughs> yeah. So before we move on, let's talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! And you said you liked it, but how much did you like Yu-Gi-Oh! I think uh, my peak was when I used to go to school with, with my deck. I was, oh. to, I was ready to throw down. Oh, at any time. But I took that like battle arm thing. No, you had one of those. I had one of those. Oh man, I wanted one of those for so long and we couldn't afford it. So I looked right bellend where everyone sat down. <laughs> everyone no, sat down no you look so cool. <laughs> don't, just, don't, don't get it wrong. Everyone was sat down at the tables, all with like the cards you're on the game mat. Yeah. And I, I'm that bellend who stood up like in the oh, position. Oh, that's so good. It's like, <laughs> I want one of those now. Because I want to have one just to have it on my wall. So when people come out and watch that and go, you know what it is. It's there for when it's time. If I saw a guy with one of them walking on the street now, I'd just go, I, I don't know how he's doing it. I don't know how he's walking on the street just not drowning in pussy right now. <laughs> what an absolute fucking god lord that man is. Fucking hell. Just... <laughs> Nisha just sat over in the corner look, she could not give less of a fuck about any of this. I just know that if I had one, though, I'd wear it to date, just to see. Because I know, you can immediately know if you're compatible with someone if they recognise what it is. And they go, oh, that's awesome! And like, Rrr! I always wondered, though, because I like, kind of dropped off on the series, was there ever a character in it who wore two? Because I think that's just like, that's next level swag right there. Yeah. So can you imagine, like, you go up to duel somebody and he rocks up with two of those things on his arm? Just like pick your like he, he just runs up and he's like he, he rocks up like a fucking Jaeger from Pacific Rim. You know, I've got no chance. The man he's got two things. It's like um, when Kaiba rocks up to try and get Yugi's granddad's bloody uh, blue eyes white dragon. He's got the the briefcase full of cards. <laughs> Boom! Like trade me, motherfucker! Like holy shit, man! Listen to me, old man. Give me your blue eyes white dragon card and I'll trade you all of these. Whoa. Whenever I hear that though, I can think of the vagina monologues. I was hoping. I was hoping because I think we all discovered that independently. Yeah. And then all just mentioned it to the people that we're talking about. There's this famous video out there called the Yu-Gi-Oh! Vagina Monologues, which is as exactly as stupid as it sounds. And it's just like someone dubbing over the first episode in the series, but they replace random words with the word vagina. And it's fucking hilarious. Holy raw, real vaginas. <laughs> Actually, they're just super advanced vaginas created for the sole purpose of enriching the experience of a vagina. And it's one of my go-to videos when I'm at a house party. And do you have that moment where, oh, let's put dumb stuff on YouTube yeah, yeah. that I know will make people laugh. So let's quickly talk about that because do you have one of those go-to videos that you always put on that you think, I need to make people laugh. Bang, this goes on. And while you're thinking, Adam, I'm going to throw out a couple of mine, the first of which is Concrete Buffer Gone Wild, which is just, just a concrete buffer, just, it's just spinning. It's just spinning. Some people filming it from a, like an office, and they're just staring at it. There's all these workmen just looking at it going... And then it's like they keep grabbing it, and they try to grab it, and then they call it a stick. And like the guy who's watching it is documenting it like a nature documentary. And he's like, oh, it's so good. The clip of which will be in now. We're going to try the big stick theory. He's going to go flying across the... Try to kill the engine with water and hit the big stick. Jesus Christ. Okay, now we're gonna smother it with a tarp. So you've had time to think now, you've got a specific video that you always put on and go, this is it. There's one clip in a video, she's like, news fails. Okay. And it's this lady reporting about like, she's at this like DIY shop and they're putting up a photo frame and then she goes to hammer the nail into the wall. <laughs> straight straight through the wall. You've tried to make home improvements yourself. Mistakes happen. For example, if you're trying to put a picture frame up there on the wall, 
Oh, news reports. Mine's always it's a lady in a horse stable or something, and in the background, a horse tries to jump over something. But the horse, like, has its front leg stuck and goes completely vertical in the air and falls down. <laughs> it's so good. I only bring it up now. I don't care. No fuck, it's my chart. Do what I want. Oh, I'm gonna, oh, mate. Uh, where is it? YouTube. Oh, give a fuck. Oh, man. I need to show you it because it's two seconds long. It's amazing. Can everyone see at home, folks? Yeah. Oh, fuck it. I can bring it. Like, oh, give a fuck. Like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Every fucking because it goes, it goes so vertical. I've never seen the amount of airtime achieved by a horse. Right, another one that I always put on is "Bird Knows What's Up." <laughs> it's just some guys looking down a pipe, and it's like, dude, there's a bird. No, I'm telling you, there's a bird. Look, it knows what's good, it's in there. And then it's like this bird head pokes out. Ah! <laughs> Every fucking time it gets me. Antonio, I just heard it inside. <laughs> oh, that's slashing. And then obviously Doggo Foss. But... Yeah, yeah. No. Right, is it time to bring that back? Oh, it's not going to. We'll bring, do you know what? End of the video, Doggo Foss. Let's go. Right, so. <laughs> to bring it back to Yu Gi Oh! within the context of the story, Seto Kaiba is an egomaniacal, multi billionaire, and ruthless CEO of just this ginormous. Like multinational company, the guy is like certifiably insane. We've, we've talked about it briefly in another video, and um, if you've not watched that one, like long story short, Kaiba killed somebody to get one of his blue eyes white dragons. Jesus. But like his backstory, do you know how he became a billionaire? This is amazing. Of course. So, well, I think it's like when he was about eight years old, 12 years old, something like that, his dad gave him like 10 million dollars. Yeah. And said, you're not going to inherit any money unless you can double that money. And he doubled it in a day by buying a company from somebody of a kind-hearted man and then saying, unless you buy it back for double the price, I'm going to fire all your workers. And there might be a few details off here and there, because that's my loose recollection of it because I read it a few years ago, but yeah, he does just like basically blackmail a guy into giving him double his own money back or I'll fire all your workers. What's this about him being based on a real dude? Well, according to the guy who created Yu-Gi-Oh, Kazuki Takahashi, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that... I, can't, I get his name right and then mispronounce, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing... Her. Well, according to one Kazuki Takahashi, the guy who created Yu-Gi-Oh, um, like Seto Kaiba, the character, was inspired by a story told to him by a friend. And this friend was trying to get into a collectible card game, but didn't really know where to start. And surmised that the best way to, uh, you know, just learn about the game would be ask someone who likes the game a lot and is very good at it. So they approached a, like, you know, a veteran card collector, a like, self-professed expert on this game, to so just, like, pick their brains. Like, do you have any advice for a newer player? And this person turned to them and in the most smug and derisive manner possible says, talk to me when you've collected 10,000 cards and walked away. <sighs> and Takahashi recalls that he was at first very annoyed by this story, that someone could be such a, a smug, arrogant bellend over something as like, you know, inconsequential as a card game. But over time he realised that would actually be a really good character trait for a villain. Mm. And obviously that evolved into Seto Kaiba, a smug, arrogant dickhead who can't take the fact he loses to someone who plays the game for fun. Yeah. And because obviously he takes it the most serious of anyone. Well, Yugi gave his Duel Monsters Championship crown to some nobody? No one deserves that title but me! And I think it makes for a very compelling villain because you kind of like Kaiba, but you also want to see him lose. Yeah. And that's like a very anime thing. It's like Freezer is a similar one where <laughs> he's such a charismatic villain because he's such a dick and he knows that he's a dick. Yeah. And he can back up everything that he says, but you also like to see him get his comeuppance. So in that vein, favourite Freezer getting his shit pushed in moment. Because I know you're a big fan of the Dragon Balls as well. I think it's just like after you know, the battle on Namek and stuff, and he returned to Earth, like, right, round two, I'll yeah, just I've finish done it. him I'm off. A robot, I'm <laughs> yeah. ready. And then Trunks just chops him up and finishes Rock. him. It's <laughs> just like nothing. I think mine is in the, the Broly movie, the Super Broly movie, where Frieza engineers the battle between Broly and like Goku and Vegeta. It's like, oh, I'm gonna get rid of it, I'm gonna kill the Saiyans with another Saiyan. Yeah. And they run past him and go, heads up, Frieza, and Broly just, boom, just ah, past him and kicks the shit out of him for like an hour straight <laughs> yeah. as they learn to do the fusion dance. <laughs> <laughs> 
お待ちなさい私はそれに<笑> And I'll bring it back to Kaiba to end the video, but I'd rather just end it on the clip from Dragon Ball. So there might be some new fans of the channel like wondering what Carl what's this Doggo Force thing about. So to clarify, it's one of those videos that always makes me laugh, like we discussed earlier. And I have not watched it in about eight months because I can't, because it nearly kills me every time. Yeah, it does. And I can already see Adam's face. He's Googled it and he can see the thumbnail. It's just the, the caption. 200 beats per minute barks and sniffs. <laughs> so, I, just need, I need to prepare myself. and I need, to, I need to mentally prepare myself. I can't handle this. This is one of those videos that, when we're at house parties, you can confirm, Adam, you've seen it come on in the background. You can't breathe. I can't breathe, no. So, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> you didn't show me the video. I need to see it. It's, it's the video that does it. Start it again. <laughs> 200 beats per minute. Walks and sniffs. It's the next bit that does it. <laughs> <laughs> I would have a six pack if I wash that every day. I was going to stop that before you do pass out. Oh god, it just it gets me. It's, I don't know what it is. Like everyone has those videos, don't they? Like there's just those things that you watch and they just they make you crease instantaneously. It's like for me, like the only other one that gets as close to making me laugh that hard is the Super Best Friends, like their Harry Potter video they did. <laughs> Where it's like the Harry Potter Connect video, <laughs> and they're doing like the duels in it, but you've got to do it in front of Connect. Wait, what are you shooting out of your legs there? <laughs> what am I doing? Where it won't go. Head? It won't go. <laughs> oh, the bit where he's just like, oh, you've got to like cast a spell, so he's just sat in front of like the the Connect thing, going, whoa, yeah, come on, Hermione, check this shit out. Just that's what. Oh, yo, Hermione, check out this shit. This is the sickest beat break dancing I've ever seen! <laughs>